right so in today's lesson we want to look at how to prepare an amortization schedule in financial reporting basically if you take the standard IFRS 9, IAS 32 and IFRS 7 it is required that any time any of the financial instrument is measured at fair value through amortized cost then subsequently if you want to measure such an instrument you need to amortize them either it being financial assets or a financial liability it needs to be what amortized subsequently if the initial measurement is a financial asset or financial liability that is measured through amortized cost in the same way if you are dealing with the compound instrument and then you've splitted your compound instrument into equity options and liability options the entity is faced with two options either to convert the liability options to shares or hold that liability into maturity and in any time the entity is going to hold that liability into maturity then the liability is expected to be amortized so again we will see a some form of amortization in there. Most uh, assets uh, prescribed by the standard subsequently need to be amortized. So it is important that we know how to prepare amortization schedule in financial reporting. So anytime you are faced with questions that require that you prepare amortization schedules for such asset or such instrument, you can easily um, go about them. We will use one question for the purpose of augmenting our understanding but before then let's look at the critical things we are supposed to look out for when it comes to amortization now the first thing i would like to talk about is the <clears throat> anytime a question is given to you the question comes with a coupon value or the face value the amount that the instrument is being issued so we have what we call the face value also known as the coupon value so this is the amount that the instrument is being issued at so that is the amount now it is required that at the end of the period this amount should be translated to a figure or the market value or this coupon value or this face value at the end of the period should be a different thing or it can be the same thing depending on what is happening in the question so that value that we expect that this amount translates itself to is what we call the redeem value mostly the maturity value or the at the end of the period the amount that we are expected to get from these the issuance of the instrument will be redeem value or maturity value so let's state that as our maturity value or redeem value so let's uh, make this one r being which is the redeem value and then we will make our coupon value c so we have coupon value and then redeem value now remember that when we are issuing the um, face value we are issuing any instrument at its face value it comes with what it comes with a percentage so that percentage is what we call the coupon rate <clears throat> or the nominal interest rate the uh, interest that is quoted on the um, coupon rate <clears throat> sorry on the coupon value is what we call the coupon rate now again do not forget that there are some times that the instrument is supposed to be issued at a discount so we have issued discounts because i'm saying this because when you come here you are going to look at another discount but we have issued discounts that mostly comes with the um the issuance of the instrument so we have issued what discount with that one remember that we deal with it when you are trying to initially measure your instrument 
So here we are looking at instruments that are mostly measured at fair value through amortized costs, financial assets or financial liability that is measured um, you know, at fair value through amortized costs. And with the initial measurement, we already have videos on all the theories on financial assets and financial liability. So if you have uh, you don't have any um, basic understanding of the financial instrument, you can just go back and watch our video to augment your understanding before you proceed to look at how to amortize. So here, what I was saying is that with the initial measurement as a means of recap, so anytime as we have already discussed as a means of recap, anytime we want to initially measure our financial instrument that is fair valued um, through amortized cost, then basically it is the initial measurement is going to be the fair value and this fair value is basically the transaction price, the coupon value quoted in the question. Then we add transaction cost. This is we add transaction cost if the instrument is a financial asset. But remember that you will less you will less your transaction cost if the instrument is a financial liability. So here I'm making it plus or minus um, transaction cost because if it's asset, we add if it's liability, we less. And then mostly this um coupon value or the issue of the instrument comes with what a discount. So this is what we call the issued discount. So if there is any issued discount in the question, then it's supposed to also be less. So issued discount is also supposed to be less to establish your initial measurement. Now, subsequently, what I expected to do, we are supposed to what amortize. That is why it is important to know how to what, how to amortize. Now, sometimes they will tell you that the instrument is supposed to be Redeem. So here we are looking at what goes into the amortization. Okay, but there are sometimes they will give you a clause that the instrument is redeemed at par, is redeemed at a discount, or is redeemed at a premium. So if in case you are faced with such terms or such concepts, how are you going to go about them? Remember that we have seen discount here. This is a redeemed discount, not an issue discount. That's why I have laid emphasis on the initial measurement because we will see issued discount and you may probably see a redeemed discount. They are different things altogether and how to treat them is differently. Now, with this statement here, tells us how our redeemed value should be in relation to the coupon value. The concept here tells us how sh we should see our redeem value or our maturity value compared to our face value. Now, anytime you are going to redeem an instrument at par, it means that our coupon value must be the same as our redeem value. Here, there is no issue. So, assuming that we have an instrument that is supposed to last for three years. At the end of the third year, maybe we issued it at um, thousand dollars. The face value is thousand dollars. Then at the end of the third year, we are expecting that the redeem value also be thousand dollars. It comes with no issue. So at the end of the period, we assume that the coupon value must be the same as what as the redeem value. Anytime it is redeemed at par. Now, the issue is with whether it is redeemed at premium or discount. That is where it comes with a bit of complications. Now, anytime an instrument is redeemed at a discount, then it means that your coupon value is greater than your redeem value. In other words, your redeem value is lesser than your coupon value. This means that they may give you the discount in the form of percentage or they may give it to you in the form of what value. If it is given to you, let's say our 10% redeem is, is, is the uh, instrument is redeemed at a discount of 10%, it's not given to us in the value. Then you have to compute for that value, that discount. Now you have to always calculate this percentage on the coupon value 
or on the face value of the instrument. So if we are using this example, then our discount is going to be 1000 multiplied by 10% and it's going to give us 100. Since the instrument is redeemed at a discount, we are supposed to less to get the redeem value over here, it will be the 1000 less our 100, which will give us 900. So here we can see that our redeem value is lesser than our face value or our coupon value. So that is the first thing. Remember, but in assume that this was given to us and the value, it wasn't a percentage, then our work is more simpler. We just have to less the value from the coupon value to establish your redeem value. Very, very important. Now, let's come to the last one, the last concept, which is the premium. Anytime an instrument is redeemed at premium, then it simply means that your coupon value is lesser than your redeem value. Another way is that your redeem value is less, uh, so it's greater than your um, coupon value. So using the same example, assuming that this premium can also be given in percentages or it can also be given in value. So assuming that it's here, it's still, let, let's say it is 20%, we were told that the instrument is redeemed at a premium of 20%. If that happens, then we are supposed to seek our coupon value. So remember that anytime you want to calculate for the value, when they are given to you in percentages, you charge that percentage on the coupon value, not the initial measurement, but on the coupon value, because the initial measurement may be different from the coupon value because of the items over here, the items that are going to influence the fair value or the coupon value over here. So we made it to be different from what the initial measurement. So remember to charge the percentage always on the coupon value or the face value of the instrument. So if that's the case, I will charge my 20% over here and I'm going to get 200. What that means is that if I want to get my redeem value over here, I'm going to take the coupon value of 1,000 and add my 200 to it to get 1,200. So this has established the fact that my redeem value is greater than what my coupon value, or my coupon value is lesser than my own, my redeem value. So at any point in time, you can always establish your redeem value or your maturity what value. So this, we are going to what? apply this concept in solving a full amortization schedule and we will look at the figures you have to send to your income statement or your profit or loss account and the figures you are supposed to what, transfer or send to your statement of financial position. Some of them may fall under current liability whilst others may fall under non-current liabilities. So now let's look at how to prepare a full amortization schedules and the figures that we have to transfer to the various financial statements. Okay, so a typical amortization schedule in financial um, reporting should look like this. So we have our amortization schedule or some people call it schedule to be like this. All right, so we probably have a year over here. <clears throat> you have our year over here. The year is always the first thing. And then we have our cash flow, or sometimes we call it our opening balance. So here, let's call it our opening balance over here. Our opening balance. And then you have your finance cost. Your finance cost. Your finance cost over here. This finance cost, is from your effective interest rate given to you in the question. So we also call it your effective interest rate. Now, remember that it will be a finance cost if it's a financial liability and it will be um, a finance uh, you know, income if it is a financial asset. So if it's a financial asset, then here will be finance income. But if it's a financial liability, it will be a finance cost. Here we will be looking at a liability so uh, that's how I made it um, finance cost. Then we have to our 
um, cash payments or we have to look at interest paid interest paid now here to it differs is either it is interest paid or interest received depending on the instruments you are looking at so if it's a financial liability it's interest paid but if it's a financial um, you know asset then it's going to be interest received because that one you are investing and you are going to receive but if it's a liability that means you are owing the investors so you have to pay now the last thing after taking into consideration certain things then we get to our closing balance the closing balance now these figures the closing balance figure and the finance cost figure are very important when it comes to amortization because this figure will fit, will be translate every year will be transferred to your statement of financial position and then the finance cost will be sent to your p or l account at the end of every period the finance cost so this will go if it's a financial ability to go as an expense but if it's a, an asset it's going um, you know <clears throat> as an income to you because it's a financial asset so you go under finance income all right so the years comes here and remember that at the end of the year let's say we are dealing with three years like the first example i cited to so year two and then year three over here at the end of the period we expect that your redeem value or the amount here your closing balance should be zero at the end of the period you expect that the closing balance here should be zero and at the end of the period we should expect to see our maturity figure over here or our maturity value which is going to be the redeem value all right without wasting my time let's take the question a question to argument our understanding so we'll be doing the workings over here once we do the um the actual work in the schedule over here Remember that the um, question link would be um, provided in the um, video description. So you can probably um, go to the video description, click on the link to get full access to the question so that you can follow um, the solution here. Right. So the question is, the company issues 4% loan notes with a nominal value of 20,000. So we are told that the company is issuing a 4%. So this will be your coupon rate, loan notes with a nominal value. So remember that our nominal value, the same as the coupon value over here is $20,000. All right. You we are again told that the loan notes are issued at a discount. So remember, this is a, there's an issued discount here of 2.5%. Um, this is an issued discount, not a redeemed discount. Remember. And then at a cost, as an issue cost, so there's a transaction cost in there, and this transaction cost is given to us in value to be um, five, three, four dollars. And then the next statement says that the loan note will be repayable at a premium. So here, this loan is going to be redeemed at a premium. So it's going to be repaid at a premium. It was given to us in percentage, so at a premium of 10%. So this is redeemed at a premium of 10% after five years. So this, we are going to hold this uh, particular instrument for five years. Now we are given in the question again that our effective interest rate is 7%. Our effective interest rate is 7%. Now the question is, what amount will be recorded as a financial liability when the loan notes are issued? So that will be your initial measurement. And then they say, what amount will be shown in the statement of profit or loss? In the statement of um, uh, financial position for the first year this question is just looking at the first year but we are going to look at all the five years so that we can establish our understanding so first things first let's look at the initial measurement so the initial measurement of this particular instrument so our initial measurement is going to be our coupon value so our coupon value of twenty thousand dollars then remember we will less our discounts so we are going to less our discount of 2.5% and this is going to give us 500 so let's calculate that and see if it's 500 actually so yeah 500 so remember this is an issued discount so we less and again we will less our transaction cost because this particular instrument is a financial liability how do we know because they said the company issues you know we have video on financial instruments where I have um, looked at those 
technicalities. When they said invest or acquire, then it's telling him that it's a financial asset. But here they said issued, or if they said issued or sold, then it should tell you that it's a financial liability. So here we have a transaction cost of five, three, four. So we are lessing this one too. Then our value here, the actual value here of our the initial measurement, sorry. So the initial value of our um, instrument is going to be 18,000. So let's less this. So 20,000 minus 534 minus 500. So 18,966. 18966. That is going to be the initial value of the instrument. So remember that we have um, established our initial value. Now the initial value here is always the opening value in year one. So the 18,966 uh, 18, is going to be our opening value in year one. So please remember that your opening, your initial measurement becomes the opening value in year one, not your coupon, you know, value, not the coupon value. Now, how do we charge this interest? The interest charge is going to be the same for all the years by charging the coupon rate on your coupon value. The coupon rate times your coupon value gives us our interest paid or interest received in the case of financial assets. All right, so to establish our interest rate here, so our coupon rate in this question is 4% multiplied by an amount of the coupon value of 20,000. It is going to give us um, $800, $800. So in year one, it's going to be $800 over so right here. Year two, the same $800. Year three, $800. And year four as well, $800. And year five, $800. Remember, we are less and these figures are less, always they are less. In the case of financial assets as well, they are less. Okay, now we charge our effective interest rate on the opening value to always establish our finance cost. Is that okay? We always charge the effective interest rate on this value to get this one. So, here yeah, it is going to be 7% in this question because the question we were told that our um, Effective interest rate was 7%, so our market rate of interest is 7%. All right, so this is how, in fact, if you don't know anything, you should first list down these figures. And remember that the last figure here is going to be what? Zero. Now, we were told that the amount is going to be redeemed at a premium, so we can also establish our premium value over here, straight away, even before we start the whole thing. So if it's redeemed at a premium, then it means that this amount here should be bigger than our initial um, coupon value or face value of 20,000. So we were told that the premium is 10%. So 10% on the our premium is going to be 10% on the 20,000. So multiply by 20,000. And this is going to give us 2,000. And remember that since it's redeemed at a premium, we have to add this to our what, our um, face value or nominal value. So here we are going to have our redeem value to be 22,000 over here, also going to be less. So please, the redeem value always comes here. Either at, yeah, you are dealing with financial assets or financial liability, the redeem value always comes here because once you've less this redeem value, you should get um, zero. Over here, then you should get zero over here, or you should get nothing or an insignificant figure. In a case, a redeem value is not given to you, and you have to determine the, um, the redeem value over here. Then, when you get to the last year, you probably have a figure over here. You probably have a figure over here. So, you add these two figures, you add these two figures. And then you less this one from it, whatever value you get becomes your retain value. So we are going to use this one. Assuming that you were not told whether it was redeemed at premium or it was redeemed at discount. When you get to the last year, you can determine that. So let's use this question to um, you know establish that fact. So from here we will charge seven percent on this one. So once you charge seven percent on this one, you are going to get one three 
two eight. So you add this to this, please always we add this to this and we less this one. So you add this to this, less this one. You're going to get nineteen four nine four as our closing balance or the year end balance. And this one is going to be our opening. Remember that the closing here becomes the opening in year two. So we are done with year one. So in year two, we are going to have nineteen thousand four hundred and ninety-four. Again, we tie the seven percent on this one. We get an amount of one three six five. So again, we add this to this and less this one to get an amount of 20,059. So the closing year becomes the opening year as well. So 059, we charge the 7% on this one and to get it is going to give us an amount of 1404. If you charge 7% on this, it should get 14. Um, zero four. Then we add this to this, and then we are going to less this one from this to get an amount of twenty six six three. Twenty six six three, and this becomes the open year as well. So we are done with year three. So in year four, the closing year becomes the open year of twenty six three three. Again, we are going to charge our percentage of seven percent on it. So if you do that, you are going to get an amount of one four four six. 1446 we add this to this and less this one from whatever we've gotten over here here we are not trying to establish the principal paid so if you are supposed to know the principal paid is taking this one minus this one will give you the principal pay before we um, probably um, add it to this one to get our closing value but here we don't want to establish the principal paid so we add this to this and less this one from this to get the closing balance over here of an amount of 21309 21309 so it becomes the opening here as well 21309 and then here we charge the seven percent again on this value and it's going to give us 1491 9491 now let's look at something over here Let's take, let's add this and uh, less the 800 and see if you are going to get this 22,500. So like I was telling you earlier on, assuming that this value was not given to us, whether it was redeemed at a premium, it was redeemed at bar, or it was redeemed at a discount, was not given to us. Yeah, so you can determine it. You add this to this and let this one from this, it will give you your redeemed value. So let's write 21,309 plus 1491. Or minus 800 and it's going to give you 22,000 this value by here. so you take this one and you are going to get zero over here or nothing or sometimes you should get one or 0 0.1 or an insignificant figure so basically this is how to prepare your amortization schedule very simple remember that the closing year becomes here and you charge the effective interest rate on this one so you add this and this will this to get your closing value now in financial reporting Anytime you are done with this and you leave it like this, you end up not getting the full marks or something simple because you have to present. The, there is much focus on presentation. So you have to present this to, into the relevant you know, financial statement of the entity. If you leave the calculation, these are merely calculations. So if you leave them like this, you are not going to get the full marks. And, but here, remember that you are going to make use of your finance cost as well as your, your closing balances. All right, so quickly, let's prepare our, so first of all, we have our POL extracts over here. Extracts over here. So because of the nature, pardon me, so we have year one, year two, year three, year four, and then year five. So in the POL account, what we send there is going to be our finance costs. So I'll come here, my finance costs. So all the years you send them. So in year one is one three two eight. So one three two eight. And then in year two one three six five. Here is one four um, four. So and the rest. So year four is with one four four six and the rest. So that is what you do with the POL account. And then when you go to your statement of financial position. And the liability component, you have your uh, long, your long-term liability. So you have your financial 
uh, ability over here because it's a financial ability you have to turn it up as such if you have to be a financial asset to go under what the asset column in the statement of financial position so here again we have year one year two year three year four and then year five now from this figure up to this figure are going to fall under the long-term liability and then the last one before the year this is just one year so that's going to fall under a short term or um current liability don't forget so under current we have financial liability that the year four the fourth one then the last year it will be zero so here my fourth year is going to fall under current liability to be 21 zero three zero nine because from year to year it's just one year from year four to year five it's just one year which is making it to be your current but from year to year it's going to take more than one year so it's going to fall under a non-current ability or a long-term ability so here in year one i present this one 19494 and then in year two i'm going to have 20 and 59 in year three i'm going to have 20 six, six, three and then year four comes here so pardon me with the size of the board i hope that has done is there this these are how we transfer the figures into the various to their respective financial statement for the entity all right so basically this is how you prepare your schedule this is the same thing applies when you're dealing with a financial asset remember that if you are dealing with a compound instrument and you are supposed to what subsequently amortize the liability options is the same thing this is it's also a financial liability so the approach is the same so remember that if this year was to be um three years so we are ending everything here then this place is going to be zero so remember that this one becomes what your current and this one becomes your what your non-current liability depending on what is happening but if it's an asset it's going to be current asset and non-current asset depending on the instrument you have in the question so basically this is how to amortize Thanks for being part of the learning family and in case you have any questions, don't forget to leave it at the comment sections and it will be readily attended to. Remember that the um, question um, link will be provided in the video description. Thank you.